Well, let me welcome you to the Wednesday edition of Lunch with the Pastor, and thanks for joining with me today. And uh, we're, we're looking at, we're going through John chapter 4, and looking at how uh, in the culture that we're in today, the situation we're in today, how you're going to be able to be a witness. And some of the barriers that we see going on and what we think these will be hindrances can actually be ways uh, to open doors for us to be able to share our faith John chapter 4 picks up with Jesus uh, leaving Jerusalem, and it says that he needed to go through Samaria. And what that means is, one, there was a divine appointment going to take place. We know that he meets the woman at the well. But it's learning that evangelism and winning our friends and family to Christ requires three things. And you're going to see, we'll see this throughout this text. is it, it, It's intentional. It's relational and it's confrontational. And it's intentional, meaning that Jesus had a purpose and a reason for going through Samaria. His mind was thinking, even though there was going to be this divine appointment, if you're not intentional about evangelism, if you're not intentional about an awareness of the lostness of the world, you'll miss it. God will bring somebody right to your front doorstep and you'll miss it. So there's and being intentional. That's what it means when Jesus needed to go through Samaria. There, there was a reason and a purpose for him to be uh, in Samaria. It's all relational. He builds this relationship with uh, the woman at the well, uh, demonstrates a level of kindness. He overcomes some of the barriers that were between men and women and Jews and Samaritans. And so uh, it, it's a relational, but let me, let me say this about relational evangelism. We talk about, you know, relational evangelism and, and uh, you build relationship with somebody, but if, you, if it takes you five years to build a relationship with somebody and then you're going to share Christ with them, you've waited way too long. I mean, that, that's the problem I have with relationship evangelism. It's all about relationship, rarely about evangelism, rarely, rarely about telling anybody about Jesus. So, uh, uh, it, it's it's all relational. Uh, you know, there's not many of us jerks that, that lead people to Christ. So you, you've got to demonstrate biblical kindness and biblical grace with people. And that relationship ha has to be there, but don't let the relationship get in the way of you sharing your faith. And then it's all confrontational. Confrontational, not meaning in-your-face confrontation, you know, hateful confrontation, but confrontational meaning that at some point you've got to share the claims of Christ with someone and confront them, in, in a sense, uh, about Christ and, and who Jesus is and their need for, for the Savior. Well, here in this passage, uh, as you see Jesus uh, coming into um, uh, the city of Sychar, and it says he, he came, he was wearied from his journey, he sat thus by the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Now, I'm going to chase a little rabbit here. Um, that's really what the translation says, it was the sixth hour. There are some Bibles, and, and some that I like, that actually will go ahead and interpret it for you, and will say that it was 12 noon, or they'll tell you it was six in the evening. Well, the fact is, nobody knows. And while there is a level of interpretation with it, and, and if I ever preached from the text, I, I would probably address that. Uh, my uh, belief or thought of this, that it's, it's most probably uh, the sixth hour was six o'clock in the evening, uh, both by the fact that the travel from uh, Jerusalem and walking that distance uh, I doubt they would have made it there by, by 12 noon. Uh, and then secondly, what many scholars say is that when John wrote and was using this, he was probably utilizing Roman time rather than Jewish time. But he, here's, here's the issue. I, I've heard entire sermons preached on the sixth hour and and saying it was 12 noon, meaning that the woman was came in the heat of the day because she was embarrassed about her sin and heat of the day because of the rejection of the people and, and those kinds of things. And we have to be really, really careful about how we interpret the Bible and not to take something that is not said, uh, not even implied, 
and try to develop an entire theology. That's where bad theology comes from. Uh, make sure that you have, you know, direct biblical authority in sharing this information or what of what you're going to say. Well, when Jesus got there, there were all kinds of barriers that he had, had to cross. And so understanding that in our culture, you think about, you know, the racial issues, you think about um, the political issues, the cultural issues, the socioeconomic issues. There's a lot of things going on in our world, and we're thinking, well, you know, how are we going to win people to Christ? Well, what we'll learn as we walk through this passage is, is that Christ crossed those barriers. There, there was a racial barrier. The Samaritans were a race of people back in, in uh, the 700 B.C., uh, in, in, that, in that century, uh, the Assyrians came and they conquered the northern kingdom of Israel. And uh, Shalmaneser was the king. And one of the things that he did is that he replaced some of the Jews that he took uh, to, back to Assyria with, uh, with Gentiles, with Assyrians. And so the Jews that were left intermarried with them, and they created a brand new race of people that was called the Samaritans. Samaritan, you know, Samaria is a location, but Samaritan uh, is also a race of people. And so they were hated by the Jews. They were hated by the Gentiles. I mean, we talk about the racial strife that we have today between whites and blacks and blacks and Hispanics and Hispanics and Asians and and, and all of this, this racial tension that we have, there was an incredible amount of racial tension back then. There's a lot today. And here, here's the issue. You so say, what's going to resolve, you know, this big issue between, you know, uh, white America and black America and black America and whoever else? I mean, it, you know, the, the whole gamut of that, it's going to be the gospel. Now, while we've got to stand for uh, you know, social justice and and justice. You find social justice throughout the Bible, and that's that's a key fact of of Scripture. But social justice is not the gospel. Social justice is the result of the gospel. It's a consequence of the gospel. What's going to change someone from being a racist to becoming a non-racist is Jesus. It's not going to be law. It's not going to be demand. It's not going to be social norm. It's not even going to be embarrassment. It's going to be because their life has been changed by Jesus. And that's why we've got to be about the business of the gospel is because we are going to you know, engage people and meet people that, whose lives have been ruined by, by injustice, of people who have been involved in injustice, people that are racist, non-racist, whatever. And the answer for all of that, for all of us, is Jesus. And so be about the business of the gospel today. Be thinking about who is it that you know? Who is it that you'll encounter today who doesn't know Christ? And how can I build a relationship with them so that through that relationship, I can share with them the greatest news I've ever heard? Well, you have a great day today. Be blessed today. Uh, be a witness today.